Good evening. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe that uh, in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honour their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the Mass intention for the intentions of Ben and Lindsay Hiscock, requested by Grandma Winnie. Our presider today is Father Darrell Winkler. Please stand. Oh, We've gathered this afternoon in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We've gathered together on this beautiful day. It's amazing sunshine. You know, uh, we have so many months of winter. Now, I'm not a winter person, so for me it's dreadful. But this is the kind of sunshine that gives me joy. This kind of weather expire, inspires me. I hope it inspires every, all of us. So we come together. Let us be mindful, though, that we are always falling short. We never live up to be the kind of person that we really want to be and that we're called to be. So let us call to mind our need, which is constant, for God's mercy and love now. Lord Jesus, you reveal to us the mystery of the Father and his unconditional love for us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you reveal to us the mystery of your own divine relationship with the Father. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you reveal to us the mystery of the Holy Spirit who binds us together in unity. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us join Christians around the world in giving God glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people. Your great glory, Lord God heaven. 
God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. We had, um, you know, uh, this past week, the past two, I don't know. We've had a meeting on Thursday called uh, Creation Spirituality. And uh, this was our second meeting. And I think uh, we will continue these meetings in our parish. They're more than a meeting. It's a faith sharing kind of circle or, you know, coming together. There were about 20 parishioners who came together on an evening, and we were given a small presentation by uh, Chantal Balthazar right here, and by Maureen Ramsey. And they gave a small presentation on creation theology, the theology of creation, and, and this idea of spirituality. And there's, anyways, I don't want to get into all of that, but what it has been doing has been opening for many of us uh, expanding our vision of who God is. You know, um, we have, it's amazing to me, and of what creation is, and what, you know, what is in this world. You know, our, our vision can be very limited, very small, uh, when we consider all that exists. And one of the things that in this presentation was that the universe is constantly expanding, it's growing, it's dynamic, it doesn't end. It's always becoming. It's always in process, like God. So this, you know, we begin to expand our notion of what, who God is. And this Sunday is a reflection, it's called Trinity Sunday. What is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And I remember when I was first ordained, I tried to cram in a whole course on the Trinity in seven minutes. Because I thought that's what I'm supposed to do, explain to you exactly the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And so I was working and working and trying to cram into seven minutes a whole course that we took. You could spend three years, a you could, people have spent their lives reflecting on the Trinity. Who is God? What is the Godhead? Books, big thick books were written by St. Augustine in the fourth century. You know, this is when there was no computers and there was no erasers. It was all, you know, it, it's amazing to think about what has been done. Anyway, uh, this Sunday, we, but of course I cannot, I'm not gonna be able to explain to you the whole mystery of the Trinity in the moments that I have here. So let's just focus on uh, the readings. What are the readings trying to teach us? So the first is that in the first reading, we get the point that the Bible indicates that worshiping something other than God, that is, that is idolatry, is something which is ab abhorrent. You know, placing your trust in something other than God, like in money or in security or in a politician or I don't know. Uh, placing your trust in something other than God, that, mi that might be a definition of idolatry. For, and in the Old Testament, what we call the, in the Hebrew scriptures, that is an ab abhorrent thing, to worship something which is not God. That's what all those symbols, uh, the golden calf, and that's what we see in the reading today. Moses was so frustrated over the people who began worshiping something other than 
than, than the creator of the world, he was, it was appalling to him. And so he has this conversation with God, you know, please forgive them. And we begin to see some of the characteristics of God which are merciful, forgiving. Yeah, they're not worshiping me, they're worshiping something else. They don't know who I am. But I will, you know, I'll be merciful and help try to help them. So that's the first inkling. The Trinity is merciful, trying to help us. You know, when we're wrong, you know, that's what happens. Um, second, what is being, uh, okay, described is um, the first reading conveys the notion that God is completely breathtaking when we recognize the immensity of God. So, for instance, I remember seeing the Rocky Mountains for the first time. And I couldn't, it was overwhelming. This, oh my God, these mountains, these Rockies, that's in British Columbia. The first time I saw them, I needed, I couldn't take it all in. It was too, and this is the word awesome. We use the word so much today that it's losing its power. But when I remember seeing the Rockies, that was awesome. And I remember seeing the Grand Canyon south in, New Me in Arizona. And it was so vast and so beautiful. That's another example of awesome. I couldn't, I couldn't absorb it. It was just too overwhelming. It was too immense. And the Hebrew people had this sense of God. It was, God was awesome. Just incredibly majestic, overwhelming. And that's, you know, this is, that's another characteristic of who God is, is beyond our ability to comprehend. And just when we think we're beginning to comprehend, then we know we're way off again. So the second reading says, ends, the very ending of the second letter, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians says, he ends it with a blessing. He says, may the grace of Jesus the grace of Jesus be with you. What's grace? So this is telling us something about God, grace. This afternoon we had a funeral mass of a Cree elder. Her name was Teresa Walker. She's from Attawapiskat. Her sis some of her sisters are with us tonight. And in this mass, we wanted to sing Amazing Grace. You know the song? Because that's it's touching on grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they wanted to sing Amazing Grace. And in Cree, but in English, it says amazing, amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved who? A wretch like me. And I thought, what a way to envision yourself. As a, you know, I know I do bad things. I sit, make wrong choices, but I never see myself as a wretch. I see myself as someone who's trying to their best to do good to try to be what God is calling me to be. I don't see myself as a wretch. And yet this what, and so I said to this woman, what, how do they translate that into Cree? Wretch, that saved a wretch like me. What is that, how do they translate that into Cree? And she said, oh, they don't do that. It's amazing grace, how sweet the sound of someone who searches for me, who seeks me out who is looking for me. That's what they say. And I thought, oh, I prefer that translation. Let's use that one from now on. Let's find a translation that says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound of God who se seeks me out, who searches for me. That's grace. Something about the love of God that is se seeking me. Trying to f we think it's all about us trying to seek God. When in fact the real, or the reality is God is searching for me. You know, in the book of Revelation it says, Christ knocks at the door of your house. Will you respond? You know, there's a beautiful painting of Christ knocking at the door. He's holding a lantern and he's knocking at the door. Please let me in. So that's the kind of God too that I think when we talk about Trinity is the one who searches for me, who seeks me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. What is love? 
You cannot love if you're just one person. You need someone to love. That's how love exists. It needs more than itself, right? If you're going to love, you need someone to love, even if it's your cat. Gajagains, that's my cat's name, Gajagains. I love my cat. But there's no love if I have nothing to love. So love to me means something is more. It's, and it becomes not just love means, um, I think the church says fecundity, like fruitfulness. That love is creating, love creates. That's what we say about the Trinity that there's a lover and a beloved, the Father and the Son, and in this loving, we see the Holy Spirit. It's fruitful, it multiplies, it increases. That's what God's love does for us. So something about the Trinity is creative. It is, of course it's creative. We live in the created world that comes from the, the Trinity the love of God. And that love in our hearts is helping us. Whatever we know about God, it's in us too. So if God is merciful, we're to be merciful. If God is grace, we're to be graceful. If God is fecund, we're to be fecund. You know, gen fruitful, generous. And the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. What is communion? This tells us something about God too. And communion is why I'm wearing this. This is, a, this is really a lot of little children. I like to wear it at first communion or when I'm with kids, when I go to the sc schools. You know, all of these little children, these human beings. And for me, this is communion. We're all in this together. You know, it would be, it would be even better if there were groundhogs in here because I have a lot of groundhogs in my backyard right now. And they're destroying my irises. And foxes, I have foxes back here. If we could include those too, because they're part of the communion. That's part of reality, the created world. You know, that's what communion is. We're all in this together. So when we come up for Mass, and after we've blessed the bread and made it holy and the wine, and you're coming up to receive it, that's communion. We're all in this together. It's a communal act. It used to be, back in another age, a generation or two ago, we thought communion was a private act, that it was just about me and Jesus. And I go to receive communion. Sisters used to put their veil over their heads. Oh, this is me and Jesus' time. I receive communion, and now I pray just me and Jesus, as if this were an individual, private act. But we've come to understand, we, I don't know who we is, the church, parts of the church, Parts of us in the Catholic Church and the Christian community see receiving communion as a communal act. It's something we do together, all of us, because we're in this boat together. That's what Pope Francis says. We're all in it together. So we're doing our best. Communion is not, by the way, some people think this, a reward for being good. Well, I come up to, I can receive communion because I've been really good and I'm going to get my reward. Pope Francis says communion is medicine for those who need help. That's what that act is. We're seeking growth. We're seeking healing. That's what communion is. That's what God is. God, God is about healing and helping us. So when we act, we're, act, we're asked to reflect on the Trinity, I don't know what to say. I could try to tr condense my uh, course in the Trinity that I took 30 years ago with Margaret. Uh, she was my favorite uh, pro uh, professor when I was in the seminary. Her name was Margaret. Margaret O'Gara. <laughs> she was my favorite. Oh, my goodness. She talked about the Trinity like crazy. And I, it was my favorite course, but that's 30 years ago. And I think we have learned a lot more about the Trinity in 30 years, because we're now concerned about creation and how is God involved in the created world. We're concerned about women and the, the voices of women. How does that change our conception of the Trinity? All of these things, it's been growing, our understanding of the Trinity, and because we're hearing the voices of people who are speaking out. So there's lots to say about the Trinity. So it's a good thing we have this Sunday to think about who God is. What is God for me? Is he someone who heals me? Yeah. Is he someone who, 
who is merciful to me? Yes. Is he someone who I am to imitate in my own life? Yeah. All those things are what we think about when we think about the, the holy mystery of who God is. Having listened to God's word, let us now profess our faith in the words of the, ninth, of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, blind like the last Believing that God dwells with us always, let us give voice to our needs and the needs of our world. For the grace of discipleship, may the church be formed and reformed through prayer, hope, and steadfast attention to God's word as it moves through the synodal process. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, as he prepares his visit to Lisbon and Fatima for World Youth Day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, including our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, that they be inspired to act justly, to promote goodness, and to speak in truth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For students who are graduating and seeking employment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by fires and floods and our changing climate, that they may find help and support in every way possible, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, reflections of the life-giving Trinity in the love that binds them together, and for parents, guardians, and grandparents who shape the lives of our young people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, homebound, and hospitalized, that they may experience God's healing hand, especially Mary Teresa McElloran, Chris McCaffrey, Kevin Sloan, Dwayne Domenko, Pippa Beck, Dennis Mayer, Teresa Hall, Tom Charlebois, Amanda Monette, and those who care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Teresa Walker, Paul Kelly, Olivia Kojima, Helen Hughes, and those who have died in Ukraine and in all other wars, and for all who mourn them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Triune God, in your great love, you create, you redeem, and you sanctify this world. Receive our prayers that, guided by the Spirit, we might be beacons of your love throughout this world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh God, Almighty.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, this, our oblation of our service, and by it, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, and they never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You who love the human race and you who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, 
so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, with all bish bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. We remember especially Teresa Walker and Paul Kelly and Paul Anthony Gray, Olivia Kojima, and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you in eternity. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Basil, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Annabelle, I'd like to invite our Cree elders to sing a hymn for us in Cree tonight. Annabelle and Mary, can you come? They're going to sing Amazing Grace in Cree.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health and body of soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I think we have a couple of announcements. Please note the next conversation for our times in the St. Basil's Zoom series will be next Sunday, June the 11th at 2.30 p.m. The presenter is Dr. Doris Kieser, and the title is Sexuality and Catholic Thought, Flourishing Bodies. Details and the Zoom link are on our website, and you must register to join. You are reminded that this Sunday, June the 4th, you are invited to view the film The Letter in the Parish Hall following the 10 a.m. Mass. This will be followed by a soup lunch and discussion. Coffee will be served downstairs immediately after Sunday Mass. You are also reminded of the St. Basil's CWL bake sale being held before and after Mass this Sunday, together with the Carlington Community Chaplaincy. The proceeds will go towards supporting a yearly retreat for the women's group of the chaplaincy. Thank you for your generous support. The Knights of Columbus Round Table have been asked by Father Darrell to host a welcome to summer barbecue on Sunday, June the 25th, after the 10 a.m. Mass. Please bring a salad or dessert to complement the hamburgers, hot dogs, and chili. Any free will offerings will be donated to cover the cost of this event. If you are planning to attend, please take a ticket from the envelope attached to the poster in the narthex. Details are in the bulletin. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you on this solemnity of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank you.